Our last group of sedimentary rocks are the inorganic or mineral sedimentary rocks. So a mineral forms by chemicals that are left behind when water evaporates. So those chemicals, those compounds, form into a crystalline lattice, crystalline structure as they um, precipitate out of the evaporating or drying water. So anytime you have water that's trickling down through layers of the earth and reaching a cavity such as a, um, a cave or a little hollow or crack under the ground, those minerals can then precipitate out into that hollow or pore. If you think of something like a geode, a geode is all of those minerals that came maybe from another rock that were dissolved in water and then precipitate out in a, um, a hollow or a cavity under the Earth's surface. And if you have a geode with really large crystals, just like our large crystals in an intrusive igneous rock are the ones that form more slowly, in a geode, those are crystals that had a long time to precipitate out. And the larger, more perfect those crystals appear, the slower that precipitation happened. So a mineral that counts as a mineral or inorganic sedimentary rock can be any raw specimen of the mineral, or it can be one that includes little bits of impurities that were picked up along the way of that water traveling through the Earth's surface. So here we have the sedimentary rock version of gypsum. So gypsum, as I've mentioned before, is very, very soft. It can be scratched by your fingernail. So this one here, I'm able to scratch it with my fingernail. It has the same mineral properties as what makes it up, but this one counts as a sedimentary rock because it is a precipitated out mineral. Now limestone is made up of carbonates. It's calcium carbonates. You have that mineral calcite showing up in a lot of different places in sedimentary rocks. You can have that limestone showing up in our bioclastic minerals, um, our bioclastic rocks, I'm sorry, but you can also have that limestone showing up in what's called travertine. Travertine is another type of rock that is used commonly in interior decorating. So if you have travertine in your home, know that it's calcite. It can dissolve really easily, so be careful of what pH of cleaners you use on it. You don't want to use anything acidic like vinegar to clean it up. But travertine is pretty cool because it forms in layers. It almost looks like a, the inside of a jawbreaker. And so this is made from water that is, um, could be slightly acidic, it could be superheated, but whatever the properties of this water are, be it acidic or really, really hot, it dissolved partially or maybe even in full some amount of calcite. So you have water that has calcite within it, calcium carbonate bearing water, and when the water evaporates, it leaves behind a little tiny bit of limestone. Now you have this happening probably in your home. When you think of really hard water, it's hot water that has a lot of lime scale in it or a lot of calcium carbonate in it. So if you look at maybe your, your bathroom faucet and there's those little white crusties on the metal, that is lime scale. That is the calcium carbonate coming out of your water when your water evaporates and the little droplets on your sink evaporate. Now, if you were super grody and you never cleaned your bathroom sink and you also were like fantastically long lived and you left that sink crud there for hundreds of years and thousands of years, just letting it grow and grow, it would start to form into layers like this travertine here and sort of form um, like those cave formations. So if you think of stalactites, those are the ones that hang tight to the ceiling and stalagmites are the ones that are on the floor. Um, so if you think of stalactites and stalagmites, they're collectively referred to as speleothems, those little uh, cave, um, cave structures. Those are made up of limestone. That's made up of the dissolved calcium carbonate. So calcium carbonate is often caught up in water. It's what's in mineral water often. And when that water dissolves over and over again in layers and layers for many hundreds or thousands, millions of years, it can leave behind these travertine slabs. It can leave behind those uh, speleothems, those stalactites and stalagmites, where those count as bioclast, not bioclastic, sorry, those count as inorganic or mineral sedimentary rocks. So those are the minerals left behind by water. So that's mineral water carrying calcium carbonate or mineral water carrying gypsum. But we also have, of course, you know, water can be pretty salty. Those salt ions come from the Earth's crust, so it's all over the place. 
So you can have rock salt forming or much harder to dissolve than carbonate, way harder to dissolve than um, salt is silica. So you remember silica, of course, but when silica dissolves and then the water evaporates very, very slowly and reprecipitates the mineral of silica or quartz, it can leave behind chert. So chert is the quartz version of a mineral or inorganic sedimentary rock. So looking at this chert here, you might be able to see this little bit. I'm trying to catch the light on it just right. Uh, oh yeah, there we go. Gorgeous. You see all these little ripples there and you can see them along the hard edge there too. It's very similar to the edges you might see on an arrowhead, which is made out of obsidian. And obsidian, if you remember from our extrusive volcanic videos, is silica too. So these are like glass. So they are also made up of silica. And just like obsidian, because it is glass and it doesn't have a known crystalline structure, it doesn't have some special cleavage habit, instead, it has a conchoidal fracture. It has a conchoidal fracture just like obsidian does because it's made out of the same stuff. It's just formed in a different way. So those ones are the chemical or inorganic sedimentary rocks. And we have one other special one. This one here is ironstone. So it's iron that has precipitated out of water. And some ironstones are really special, really special to geochemists. So when the Earth's ocean first began to become oxygenated by phytoplankton, by things that used um, a new type of respiration that we know as photosynthesis, and they started creating oxygen, all of a sudden there was this oxygen in the ocean and there didn't used to be. Well, oxygen rusts metal or changes metal, oxidizes metal. And so we have these rusted red iron layers that precipitated out from the ocean and they can form what's called banded iron formations or BIFs, BIF like the bad guy in Back to the Future. So banded iron formations are really interesting to geochemists because you can tell based off of the age of the rock and how oxidized it is, how oxygenated the Earth's ocean was at a given time. So here we have ironstone, and this one's a bit more rare than the rock salt. Um, this one specifically because it's a BIF, but Ironstone is also within the group of inorganic sedimentary rocks.